the, the, the real reason why we can't get into any of these deeper issues with this movie, which that's what the point of the movie should have been. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not making my movie. Yeah. Y'all the one that came up with the premise. Right. And then, and then decide to drop the shit for some lame ass romantic comedy right here. Cause that's the out of all, all of a sudden the movie just says, I don't want to talk about no black issues no more. <laughs> I don't wanna I wanna I wanna have a romance. And it decides to be this romantic comedy out of out of nowhere, which by the way, when you do that, it leaves the magical Negro society to just be a one note joke. Mm-hmm. Cause we don't go any further with that. Yep. It's in the background. It's in the background the whole time. And I will, I will even tell you this. This could have been an interesting subplot. You know, Aaron falling for the girl that he can't have because his his white client is falling for her too. But it has to be interwoven into a stronger main plot. And, it's, and that's not the case. You have a bad movie and this is a worse movie right here. Mm-hmm. Like the romance part is even, it, it, it's much worse than the magical Negro part. And that's a bad movie right there. I cannot in good conscience talk about Double Toasted Live in LA without showing that image right there. Double oh, Toasted there Live in LA. That's from the art of Moss. He did that art right there. Some of y'all be getting that on a t-shirt, but I'll let you know about that in a little bit. The Magical Negro. You know, that's a phrase that was coined by Spike Lee to describe, for those who don't know, uh, a black character that puts the needs and story of a white character before themselves. Mm-hmm. And if you know the term, then you might know some magical Negroes yourself, such as the great Bag of Vance and who can forget Uncle Remus right there. <laughs> or that big <laughs> from the Green Mile. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> <laughs> no one knows his name. Oh, John Coffey. <laughs> John Coffey. There's a lot of people I've just heard like, who's that big that 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 saved that man's nutsack? <laughs> <laughs> that big <laughs> that saved Tom Hanks' dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, John Coffey. Could you leave the light on? <laughs> and for dinner, I like a wee bit of pickle. <laughs> it's a damn shame. But, alas, thanks to uppity Negroes out there, man, and with, with their diversity and their progress, you know, the, the magical, mystical Negroes He's losing work. <laughs> <laughs> Desperate. Look yeah, at man, yeah, yeah. That is that is a, that's the sadness. That's the sad look they have right now. I used to be employed every week. <laughs> that's him in line at yeah. unemployment. You got a job yeah. for me. <laughs> These white folks just don't need a magical Negro as much as they used to. <laughs> I mean, we still need them, but uh, we've been shamed out of it. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Yeah. Ever since COVID, <laughs> these white folks just don't need a magical Negro as much as they used to. Well, you know, once they got rid of Aunt Jemima, it was, yeah, it was oh, all downhill oh. from there. They got rid of that scarf on their head and they just got that purring, boys. Oh, progress, man. Is it really progress? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Not what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> but fortunately, fortunately, there's an organization out there that's keeping the tradition going. Helping these, oh, uh, helping these 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 poor black heroes <laughs> and the whites who need them. And the organization is called the American Society of Magical Negroes. They are so needed right now. There is a movie out there about them. You might have heard about them. If you haven't, let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer. You saw this movie, right? Yes, I did. Martin did not. See, did he's not. part of the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you're, probably, you're one of those uppy Negroes we're talking about. Bougie. Hey, man, I couldn't see it because I was out helping some white guy get his life together. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. I, I had to teach him the fundamentals of, what, of what's truly important about life. <laughs> Good man. <laughs> yeah. And improve Good. his golf game. <laughs> <laughs> well, while Martin was out there doing the good Negroes work, you know... <laughs> You could not see this movie right here for good reasons. Let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer and we'll be back with our, myself and this white Jewish man here, we'll have our review. The name needs a little updating, maybe like magical black people, or I guess that doesn't have the same ring. 
did. If you're right now on Twitch, that's exactly the name you got. <laughs> <laughs> you ready? Oh, wow. Your first client is a Jason Munt. I'm curious to see how you're going to make it out of all this. So, people, let me tell you about this movie first. I mean, you got the you got the the, 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 the gist of the plot right there from the trailer. But to give you a little bit more insight on this movie right here. So let me see. here. We have. Uh, so we got Aaron played by Justice Smith. Aaron's a unsuccessful artist, partly because he can't stand up for himself. Some of which stems from his fear of white America. You know, and this catches the attention of an older black servant named Roger, played by David Allen Greer. Uh, who, after helping Aaron from getting his ass beat by an angry white guy, mm-hmm. you know, the stuff that, <clears throat> that 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 Aaron has always been afraid of, you know. Uh, but thanks to Roger's calm nature, he eases the situation by easing the white man's fears. And he sees Aaron's cowardice <laughs> as an asset to this American society of magical Negroes. And he brings him, brings him in and recruits him to help white America feel more at ease, which will benefit not only Aaron, but all of the black people out there who don't know about this secret society. And Aaron's aside to a tech bro right here named Jason. And everything's going well. He's doing, I mean, the guy's a natural at his job. He's, everything is fine. Everything's going just dandy. You know, it's gonna be only it's gonna be a short time before Aaron gets a raise <laughs> or gets them gets promoted. But you know, it's always in a movie like this something that throws everything off. Never is anything that simple. And Aaron falls for Lizzie right here, and they kind of hit it off. I mean, there might be a chance for them to get together, and this is causing Aaron to consider breaking the society's biggest rule, and that is do not. Put your needs above the needs of these good white folk right here. Are you crazy? <laughs> Otherwise, we lose our Negro magic. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something about this movie, man. Uh, a lot of people are coming down hard on this movie. And I guess that I am in the minority of those people because I am very impressed with this film right here. It's one thing to make a bad movie, but it's another to make two bad movies in one. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I'm looking at the people and and the two bad movies they have here. They're both terrible. Both of these things they got going on here. That is pretty impressive. You don't see a lot of movies trying to be twice as bad <laughs> like this movie is right here. I'm somewhat disappointed only in that the concept is intriguing. I think it's a good concept. And with the, a smart, st- satirical script, you could really pull off something that's a cultural touchstone. Oh, yeah. Um, now, I will say that watching the trailer, once it started quickly going into the romantic comedy uh Plot, I was like, yeah, okay, you've blown it. I, I'm not interested. In no, that. no, I'm gonna tell y'all something. If you're looking for a bargain on bad movies, these magical Negroes have a two for one special for you <laughs> right now. This movie is a two piece Tuesday right here. With the bad these movies, bad these two movies going on in here are. I'm gonna tell you something, man. A lot of white people got mad about this movie. How dare you talk to, to us like that, making us all look bad. You know, you know, always see this is what we're talking about. You always get it's never certain white people. All white people are bad. Why are you doing this movie? Young man, y'all ain't got nothing to worry about with this movie right here. Y'all are gonna be just fine. In fact, I would say that this movie's a magical Negro because it works to the advantage of white people out there. <laughs> Shit, I like most of the white people in this movie than I did the black people. <laughs> <laughs> they, they wasted David Allen Greer. He he's really yeah. well casted for this, uh, in theory. Him being the lead role or the role that he has in this is great, but they do nothing with it. And there's even, you know, some yeah. social commentary. Like, he works for a Facebook knockoff, yeah. and they do nothing with it. No. Yeah. They they set up stuff, and then they don't, they don't follow through. No. Everything that this movie here tries to do, it fails miserably. It swings and strikes out every time. Never made a basket during the game. Those darts, not one hit the board at all. I've never seen a movie just fail so horribly at everything it was trying to achieve. And that's amazing within itself because the movie only had one fucking job. (laughs) And that was to satirize 
this magical Misco Negro stereotype, and it fucked that up majorly. Oh. Majorly. Oh. Do you hear me? <laughs> majorly. <laughs> I don't even think they understand the stereotype. Because by the end of this movie, I was confused. <laughs> because I think they're confused. Because they actually, I think that they're saying, they're insinuating that the magical Negro is a good thing. That's what that's what I got when I was yeah. leaving. Am I crazy here? No, no, they were saying that they are a very important part of society. Wait, what? Yeah, they are yeah. important. They keep other people safe. The, the lifespan of the average black person out there has expanded because of these magical Negroes. Now they, and I'm just a little spoiler here. They they tweak a little bit. They say maybe we need to change some things and quit kissing so much ass. But still, it's like, but we are needed by the black people out there. You know, at the, oh, for, that's that's egregious. Like for, people forget Harry Potter, man. Like they because that's what that's what a lot of people wanted here. They 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 were looking for, they were looking for like a a, a, a Hogwarts. For black people, that's not what you get in here, man. Dave Allegria talks about how the society, they're like superheroes, saving, you know, hundreds, thousands of black people at a time by kissing white people's asses. They're the Avengers. They are the Avengers of <laughs> ass kissing black people. It's stupid, man. Uh, I, and, I, I feel ill now. Yeah, man, seriously, I was stuff that I watched this with my friend Oz. Y'all know Oz and Oz and I, we, get, we were getting kind of pissed. We were yeah. like, and I'm going to tell you something. This movie, I'm, and it's going to be near the end of this review, but they do something. I don't see a lot of people saying, but if you're not, if I mention it, you're going to notice it. And I was like, wow, for, you know, for you sitting up here bumping your chest, thinking you're doing a good thing. You did something very bad for black people in this movie right here. And you know, and I'm looking at this, and if I'm talking about ass kissing black people, Aaron, who's played by Justice Smith again, he's the perfect candidate for ass kissing because you know what? He sucks. All he does is kiss ass. <laughs> and you know something? All, you know, he's either kissing ass or in every scene, he's just he's just whimpering. <laughs> he can't talk, he stutters and stammers all his words. <laughs> no, I, I that's, don't know. I, that's Justice Smith in every single role. Worse he here. Yeah, I, can I see, see what you're I, saying. I can see that. But like, yeah, when I see him pop up and stuff, I'm like, oh shit, not this guy. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, just a coward. He's another stereotype. Mm -hmm. The old buck-eyed scared Negro. That's yeah. all. <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, I'm in Virginia. Sorry, the building is gone. Yeah. And tell him. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Oh, I know. No, he, no, he's always just so low energy. It's like, hmm. man, come on, kid, pick it up. Cures can do more to help black people than a hundred marches. How? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> Boy, would you wake up? Uh, did you guys was, do something? Yeah, which that shark was going to eat him right here. <laughs> I'm surprised he didn't jump from yeah. seeing the shark. I would love to see him. <laughs> <laughs> That's him through the whole movie, man. And it's, ty it's, 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 it's tiring. It's tiring. Yeah. He, he's, a, he's a character that... He never sticks up for himself. All he does is, uh, as I say, all he does is kiss cat, kiss ass. He stammers and stutters his words. Uh, even his art sucks. He, <laughs> he throw, yeah, he's a failed artist. All he does is throw yarn over a string and, and talk about uh, buy my art. That ain't art. That's a scam. You know, it's like he's just <laughs> he talking to put that over a string, talking about look at my sculpture. That's trash. You know what I mean? And that would work in the movie. It would be funny if the character wasn't so annoying and you hated him. Like, you might feel for him in a way. Yeah. Oh, man, you know, yeah. How come people don't look at your shitty art? But it's like, no, nah, you <laughs> suck, man. You suck at everything in life. Yeah, they didn't explain his art. They didn't even let the character explain what his art meant. And the way that they portrayed him, I was like, dude, that is not what an artist would do. Like, after no one buys his stuff at an art show, which, by the way, is a huge accomplishment mm -hmm. to be a part of an art show, he throws it away. And another thing is when David Allen Greer's like, man, you got a lot of talent. What is that talent? You never <laughs> let him show it ever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was like I said, the only thing I could think was his, was that it was a talent was his cowardice. <laughs> Being <laughs> afraid of white people because he's supposed to be afraid of, 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 of white people. And and that's the thing. The, the movie says that Aaron acts like such a wimp because it's how he deals with living in in, in a racist white world. 
No, Aaron is just a bitch. Is all it is, man. I knew that was coming. Yeah, yeah. Any any color of person would intimidate this fool. Uh huh. Anybody? Shit, you know, the wind would scare them. <laughs> Anything would and it would intimidate and scare this fool, man. And how do I know? How do I know he's a bitch ass? Because he's always alone. He's got no friends in this movie. Mm -hmm. He's got nobody. They, I mean, they don't even show his family or anything. Like we don't, we don't know anything about this character. So it, it says something traumatic happened to him when he was younger. Nobody bought his car, and that's the only thing that's just oh, traumatic. No, to him. it just kind of just appears. Now that you mention it, yeah, this character is like he exists and he doesn't have family, doesn't have friends, have nothing. He's just there because they need a reason to. to uh, they need a non complicated reason for him to, to be brought into the magical uh, Negro society. Okay. They don't need him to explain to his friends what he's doing or why he has powers or where he's at and you know where he disappeared to all the time. They, they don't want to be attached to anything because we want to help him get into this, this concept of the society. Uh, you know, they, they don't want to complicate things. I, just, I, this is going to sound like a random question, but what city are they in? Yeah, LA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's weird. He's, yeah, selling yarn, not that he got these nice clothes and everything. The only thing he says, mo like that alludes to him having an attachment to anything, is that he says, "I have a white mother." That's it. Yeah, you know, I don't. But we don't get, we don't know anything about him. Where does he go? He's, you know, after <laughs> when he's done with a with, with a trashy art show, you know, I don't, I don't know. We don't know anything about this guy, none at all. Uh, and still, still, I reserved judgment. Because this is all this stuff is early on. I thought maybe we'll find out about a lot of this stuff because early on, there was still a big opportunity to satirize and have an open dialogue within the movie about the many ways that black people have to navigate through racism. Mm -hmm. You know, that 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 opportunity was there. And all these reasons could have been valid points, you know, with, with the characters challenging uh, each other. You know what I mean? Like the, the society yeah. and some of the older people could have been talking about this is this is how we handle racism with, you know, with the younger generation talking about, well, this is what we do. And they all could have had their valid points. Sure. But we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, they pull some examples like really deep out their mm. ass. The, th the, the real reason why we can't get into any of these deeper issues with this movie, which that's what the point of the movie should have been. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not making my movie. Y'all yeah. the one that came up with the premise. Right. And then, and then decided to drop the shit for some lame ass romantic comedy right here. Cause that's the, out of, all, all of a sudden the movie just says, I don't want to talk about no black issues no more. <laughs> I want to, I want to, I want to have a romance. And it decides to be this romantic comedy out of, out of nowhere, which by the way, when you do that, it leaves the magical Negro society to just be a one note joke. Mm -hmm. Cause we don't go any further with that. Yep. It's in the background. It's in the background the whole time. And I will, I will even tell you this, this could have been an interesting subplot. You know, Aaron falling for the girl that he can't have because his, his white client is falling for her too. But it has to be interwoven into a stronger main plot. And is and that's not the case. It's, it's a, it's part of a bad movie, uh, or it's a bad. Like, how can I put this? It's shitty. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> like this. Like this is you have a bad movie, and this is a worse movie right here. Mm -hmm. Like the romance part is even. It, it, it's much worse than the magical Negro part, and that's a bad movie right there. Wow, much worse. Huh? It's much worse because the bad. The Magical Negro, Negro Society sets up a premise and makes you think we're about to get deeper with it. Yeah. It drops that. Now, it was going off a cliff when we left. So we knew that, <laughs> but that was not going to be any good. But we have to stick with this for a long time. The way that it was all over the place, the, main, the way it made me think, I was like, wow, this movie feels like long form improv where they get suggestions like that lead to like a funny idea like the title. And then eventually it's just like, you know, two actors are like, we're going to turn into a romantic comedy because that's basic and that's easy. And it's what you're taught. But the way yeah. that this plays out, I was like, if this was improvised, would have been brilliant. Oh, this was not. No. Thing is, you. You know, we but right when we get into this romantic, uh, uh, this rom-com part of the movie, we are really we are already yelling stop because, you know, this is going to be lame because. Now all the attention 
is on Aaron. Oh. <laughs> Shit, before we had David Allen Green in society, it kind of take away from it. But yeah, no, yeah. oh, hell no, no, it's Aaron's story now. And if you thought that he was a bad character before, wait till you see his no game having ass try to act in, interact with a woman. Uh-huh. It's, uh-huh. It's, 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 it, yeah, he's, he's, it's, if you thought he was awkward before, wait until you see the shit he tries to pull with this girl right here. I've never seen a movie be so forgiving of a, a character not the way he does. Like, he does something shitty and, like, yeah. she just forgets. Yeah, I can't, listen, if you couldn't tell, I can't stand Aaron. I mean, I, I, the, 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 most of this movie, I want to slap the shit out of him. Since the movie started, I want to choke his ass out. So I don't understand. And choke just, him with that yarn. Yeah, it's the way, it's not because I want to be violent against him, it's the way, I, the way you slap a newborn baby to wake up. I want to slap his ass just to, just stop. Stop stuttering. Stand straight. Be a man. <laughs> <laughs> this is not that this, goddamn sweater. This is a generational thing. <laughs> it's an Aaron thing. No, no, like, no. It's 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 been alerted to me. That, okay. That it's like our generation is more like, hey, enough of that. Yeah. And stand up, do the right thing, do what you're supposed to do. You know, you, you know, quote unquote, be a man. But just like, hey, stop with this awkward shit. Yeah. But, but for the younger generation, hey, awkward is their brand. They, well, they, they, then they they go with it. Martin, no, really, you got to see this. It's it's beyond that. I it, I believe you. No, because <laughs> because to say that it was you know it's a it's a it's a young thing would be like oh well that's why she sees something in him. No, nah, you watch this man. He's so awkward and boring, and you know I don't. You do not understand what this girl sees in him, and you have to see them together to see this. Honestly, just even watching from the clips, I don't see. Oh yeah, no, and now you, wow, Martin, you saw that? Yeah, yeah, I could already go like what. By, by, it, it's like she's written to fall for him because he's not presenting anything that would make someone fall for him. He has no story to tell. Like you guys just talked about how he has no friends. Yeah. He's, he's not a good artist. <laughs> he's got no game. So what does he actually bring to the table? Well, see, this is what the movie does. This is one thing I'm disappointed with this movie about. This is the thing that kind of frustrates me with a movie like this. Now, when I say I get mad at movies, I, you know, I get mad watching them and then I'll go about my day because I, you know, I get frustrated with what they're pulling. Because the movie ain't doing its job. It's not, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. You know, the thing with this is that, you know, since the movie, this is what it's thinking. Since the movie pushed them through the, the usual rom-com situations, you know, uh, uh, almost kissing, prolonging them getting together, you know, them uh, 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 saying awkward things until, you know, they, they finally, uh, at, at the end of the movie, Get together with each other, you know, because they put us through those things. They think, oh, that's chemistry. No, that's guidelines for the most hack romantic comedy shit out there. Any any romantic comedy can do that. Mm. The only reason why some of these other romantic comedies get away with it, the difference between being hack and being a subgenre is that the subgenre has personality behind it. Yeah. You know, we give people what they expect, but you got to have personality to give these people chemistry. And have it work, you know, just putting them through the motions is just cliff notes. <laughs> you know, and, and then go try to tell us like, oh, aren't they cute together? No. Yeah. What are they doing together? That's why I was saying it reminded me of an improv scene because a lot of the scenarios they're doing, it's like, oh, that would be cute to see someone miming playing with Legos, but seeing grown adults playing with Legos, yeah. it's like, that's 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 cute. All right. That's weird. And this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everyone, excuse me for interrupting the flow of the show right now, but I do have to give a word out to our sponsor, and I want to thank Factor for sponsoring this portion of the show, and I'm glad Factor is here right now because Factor is something that I think would suit a lot of lifestyles out there like mine. You know, if you're busy like me, you're doing your best to take care of yourself. You know I'm exercising all the time, and part of exercising is having a good diet, but it's not always easy to have that if you're busy like me. And every now and then, you gotta get that quick bite to eat, so you zoom in to the fast food place, you get something nasty, you eat it, you're feeling greasy and bloated, you're feeling guilty about it. Oh, if only there was some way to find a way to eat healthy while also having an extremely busy schedule. Well, rest easy because that is where Factor comes in. Eating better is very easy with Factor's delicious, ready to eat meals. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, very premium and quality options with no cooking required. Every fresh and also never frozen meal is chef created, dietitian approved, and you know what? is ready in just two minutes. With restaurant quality, 
meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. Now, I know what you're thinking. When you're eating healthy, there's only a limited number of things you can eat. You know, you're eating the same thing over and over again so much that it doesn't even taste good anymore. That is not going to be the case with Factor. Why? Because Factor has over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and so much of the variety to suit every dietary lifestyle out there. There's so much variety for breakfast and midday, including pancakes and smoothies and more. And these meals are meant to be no prep, no mess meals. Factor meals are ready to be heat and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or any kind of messy cleanup necessary. It's also flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing your meals every week, plus you can pause and reschedule your deliveries anytime. And you're also gonna save money. So many benefits here. It's so much cheaper than takeout. And not only are you saving money with that, but we're gonna save you money right now with our code right here. You're not getting out of this. You know you're gonna want this after I tell you this. If you head to factormills.com slash toasted50 and use the code toasted50, you'll get 50% off. Let me spell that out for you. F-A-C-T-O-R-M-E-A-L-S.com slash T-O-A-S-T-E-D. And that's the number 50. You use that code right there, toasted50, and you'll get 50% off. You know I'm concerned about all of you out there. I want you eating healthy. I want you taking care of yourself. This is a good place to start right here with Factor. And I also want to thank you for all your support, as well as thanking Factor for sponsoring this portion of the show. Thank you very much to you all. And now back to the video. Annie, Annie Lee Bogan plays uh, Lizzie right here. This poor girl, I, I got, again, I got to give credit where credit is due. She's trying. She's holding up them scenes by herself. This girl might as well have been acting next to a tennis ball next to him. She might as well have been on the green screen with a, with a, with a non-existent CG character yet. They said, we'll, wait, we'll put, we'll put Aaron in later. <laughs> when we get our new Aaron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shit, they had him in post. She, they could have put a sock on a mic stand and had her act next to that shit. With some googly eyes, you know this shit is stupid. Oh, not the googly the eyes. Goose for personality, which would have more personality than in this movie. Now I don't, I'm not talking about Justin Smith. I hate to talk about actors, man. I don't. I, that shit is on the director. You cast the person, you're directing them to do that. But this character is terrible. This character is awful. The movie there is so much talking. These long scenes of blah 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 blah. That they, you know, there's no momentum behind it because there's no emotion there. These characters were none of these characters feel like they're friends. There's a moment where uh, the, the the tech bro Jason and Lizzie and Aaron get together, and I gotta tell you, none of them feel like they know each other. Mm -hmm. It feels like they they met each other for the first time every time. Every time. <laughs> every time it feels like they just met each other. Yeah, that tech bro character felt like an afterthought the whole time. He really did, man. Yeah, Jason, I forgot the uh, actor's name right here. Not not a, you know, again, not a bad performer right here. He just had nothing to work with. He, uh, yeah, uh, Drew Tarver. Yeah, they, they, you know, they, these people are just, you know, we say this all the time. They're types on, you know, written in, uh, out on paper that that's never fleshed out, you know. And so when you when they're like that, they never have any meaningful dialogue with each other. I, you know, I, I, it's a frustrating movie to watch, man. Because this is, it. Listen, it ain't. It, it's rare that a movie with this title is gonna get greenlit. <laughs> yeah. And somebody thought this was gonna be the next Get Out and shit, so that's why they greenlit this. And boy, you couldn't have been more wrong. I, it's funny you see that that VR scene. I was like, that is not gonna age well. Mm -mm. No, it's not. You should see what they try to do. They try to set up something where Aaron's going to fall down the steps. And I'm like, why don't you stop doing this? It has nothing to do with the movie. Just just move on to the next scene. I was kind of hoping he was going to fall down the <laughs> stairs to be like, oh, shit, this yeah. is going to take place in a hospital? That's he, something he, happening. He would have done something. What, is there a character arc where, hey, at the end, Aaron loses his fear of white people since he's willing to try to steal this girl away from the white no. dude? Uh, no, no, no. Oh. <laughs> he lost his fear of that girl, which he never had fear of anyway. You know, it's just... It, but they, they put them together so quickly. Mm -hmm. That's another problem is, you know, they rush their relationship because they spend so much, so much time having meaningless dialogue, talking about what they're going to do and no, I'm sorry. And hey, was that a moment? And all. I was like, get the, get, do something, do something. Yeah, their meet cute was like, get the it out. really was. Yeah, it was so lazy. It was like, oh, at a coffee shop. Wow. What a coincidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At a coffee shop. Yeah. yeah. At, of all of all things. And then at the end of the movie, man. So at the end of the movie, Aaron gives this, 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 this righteous speech about 
uh, and we all knew it was coming about what it's like to be black in America. Oh. You you don't understand. I mean, you don't understand what I have to go through, Jason. You don't get it. And it's a long speech for a movie that had no lead up to that speech. So it's, it, you know, the movie didn't earn it. Yeah. It's an unearned speech. The movie spent so much trying, so much time trying to set him up in this unbelievable romance instead of concentrating on the premise that everybody came to see. And then they're going to try to act like, like he's been through the black struggle through this whole movie. He ain't been through shit. <laughs> he didn't, nobody bothered him. Nobody did anything to him. One dude was gonna beat his ass and that felt forced. But the rest of the movie, nobody was giving him a hard time. Nothing was going on with him. He had no struggle. Shit, they even gave him the girl easily, which he didn't deserve. And then he, and then he gonna, you know, and, and, and you know, life, life is hard for him. Life is hard for him because he's lame. That's why life is hard for him. Nobody likes him. People pick on him. Nobody wants to be around him because he's boring. He's a wimp. He's a Bitch, he don't stand up for himself. You got that right, people run over here. Why wouldn't they? The biggest insult is that this movie is gonna get all self-righteous, speaking about the black experience and the black struggle and how black people are seen and portrayed. Meanwhile, all the dark-skinned people in the movie, they are in the background. Mm. They in the background are they play side characters. Meanwhile, we got this bright ass. <laughs> This light ass uh, uh, character right here. And this is not me saying that, you know, I'm not saying that light skinned characters shouldn't, that, that they're not black. I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying that at all, but he's he's a half white biracial light skinned character who had no problems in the movie at all. Right. Speaking about the black struggle. Meanwhile, all the dark skinned people, which we know colorism is a thing. And it's not a good look for a movie that's out there huffing and puffing about, you know, trying to tell us about the black experience. And then you put all these dark skinned people in the background or make them side characters in here. To me, that felt awkward. I, you know, I thought that that was a, uh, I thought that was a big oversight right here. Don't come up here and telling me about, you know, being so proud and self-righteous about black shit and you pulling the same thing Hollywood pulls all the time. Have you seen the director for this movie? Uh, yeah, I know he's light skinned too. He looks like Justice Smith, I thought. I know that. And I, you know, he could put himself in as the main character. I get that. But still, it's just a weird look when the whole society is nothing but dark skinned people. And then who gets to be the center of the movie is, you know, it's just a weird dynamic. Maybe if the maybe if the society looked more diverse and there was light skinned people in there, but mostly it's real dark skinned people that are there. Yeah, mm -hmm. they never even acknowledge that. Like no. They, no one ever said anything about that. It's like, why is he special? You know, they never had a moment like that. Yeah. But I get it. That would have been like clever and maybe funny. You <laughs> yeah, know, I was gonna this say, movie yeah, wasn't yeah, trying yeah, to be yeah, funny. Yeah. It never made me laugh. That actually would have been clever, too. I mean, if the guy wants to put himself in the film, that's fine. I'm just saying. The way the movie is made, the way the movie comes across, and the way, you know, like I said, there is a dynamic. You got a light-skinned person in the front, and every, <laughs> the society is made of nothing but dark-skinned people. And all of them, th their stories don't get told. Mm -hmm. You're pulling the same shit that the, the Magical Negro movies do. So, you know what, man, I, I, just to go on a good thing here, David Allen Greer, he's really good in the movie, mainly because he just calls Aaron out on his bullshit art. Look, I don't want to waste your time, Aaron, but I saw you at the gallery. Right, yeah, you were at the bar. My work? You mean the yarn thing? No, that didn't make no kind of sense. <laughs> <laughs> David Allen Green is always good, though. Uh -huh. He's yeah. always good. He's yeah. a professional. Yeah. yeah. Juilliard trained. Yep. No, he was, he's great in the movie, man. Another thing where you wish like he was you know, in a better film. And, and there are some small bits of clever ideas. With the society that I gave me a chuckle, you know, the whole thing about <laughs> healing people's balls and, you know, penises and whatnot. They make a joke out of that. Yeah. That's, that's, I got a chuckle out of that. I thought that was kind of funny. But the first time, right? The, the first time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 you gr grab penis. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, okay. it, you know, this, this movie still feels like a treatment, like the sparks of a of a of an idea that just needs a lot more thought and work behind it. Like this would be something where somebody would tell this person, they would say, this is what's wrong. And you would go back and rework it. And then you come out with a better product. Now I feel like shit, the first idea is the, it's the greatest idea. Nah, this, this, this could have been a, this could have been, if, you know, if you're going to satirize something, make that the focus of your film. Don't abandon it. Don't drop it. Oh, and let me tell you something, man, this movie ends on a joke. That don't they even make no goddamn sense whatsoever. I mean, it, it, this movie's always trying to be clever and dropping the ball. Uh, I heard you telling him about something in the movie that they did, and I was like, yeah, that's kind of weird. And then uh, they have a stinger 
at the movie. And I'm like, you could have left. The movie's already <laughs> bad. Because the, st the, it, the stinger doesn't make any sense. Uh-huh. Man. If y'all want to know what it is, I'll tell you after I get my rating and then after he gets through saying what he has to say. But yeah, you know, it was it was a bullshit movie. It was a, some old bullshit movie, but because of, uh, I mean, just because of the frustration by, behind them just missing the mark every time and the colorism problems that I had with it. Yeah, this movie's a man. Okay. Yeah. yeah we're yeah. pretty much on the same page. I mean, this movie was like so unfunny the whole time. I was just like, why Why did this get greenlit? It's an awesome idea, but you needed someone real to work on this. And this movie, as I was, as it was ending, I was like, all right, I guess it's just gonna end. And then they add on that last thing. It just, it kicked me in my ass out the theater. I was <laughs> like, man, this is like the opposite of a really good movie where it has stuck with me because the end pissed me off. It was some old bullshit. And then the ending is like, you get out of here. I know you're a first time director. Pick yourself up and get the f out of here. Yeah. Get out of here. You schmuck. <laughs> this shit made me mad. I, like you're trying to leave and it tripped you on the way. Yeah. yeah. I tell you, I mean, and again, I mean, I'm just, I don't want to make anything personal with any of the people that, 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 you know, the creators behind the movie. It's just that this really, you really did make something that was frustrating and kind of insulting. You know, and it's and it's just, I mean, learn from this, I guess. I mean, if enough people are telling you this, you know, if this was just me being an exception, I would maybe be like, well, that's just me. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are saying this movie really did miss its mark. You don't you don't make a satire about something and drop it for a lamer storyline. Mm -hmm. You do not make a satire and all of a sudden decide, well, I'm going to switch genres and become a worse movie. I just to me, that's just that baffles me right there. There's a lot of movies that will do that in the third act. Yeah. Like, like they'll they'll have a lot of great concepts. And then by the third act, they go like, oh, yeah, we got to wrap up the the sort of plot we've had. Yeah. And, and yeah. You, ex you accept it. But it sounds like this did it <laughs> before the second. act. Yeah. And the the, the 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 two things that are weird in this movie. I mean, and I'm with, I'm with you, man, on this because Oz and the Oz turned to me. He's like, this is supposed to be a comedy. It wasn't. Oh, it, was not, it, was, it was not that funny, really. It was really playing it boring and kind of straight for a little while with the romance part. Uh you know, it was heavy on the romance, which was lame and light, very light on the comedy. But at the end of the movie, he wants to get together with Lizzie. So nobody's surprised about that. So he has to take her somewhere where, he, you know, he wants to be alone with her. So he has magic to teleport to different places, mm -hmm. which they don't really explain the powers in this movie. either. They're kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know why he doesn't use his powers more to do things. Uh, you know, they're very loose with that. But he wants to talk to her privately. So the, they were making Legos. Uh, and he and he said uh, it looks like the Chrysler building. So he takes it to the Chrysler building. The, the Empire State. Oh, the Empire. Oh, yes, because she said he was making a. Uh, he said it's like the Chrysler building. She said it's the Empire State building. So he takes it to the the actual Empire State building, uh, and to tell her how he cares for her, how you know these these, you know uh, uh, how it's complicated and whatnot. But then he's called back to the Society of Negroes, magical Negroes. So then he, uh, so then he when he when he's called back. He goes back, talks to David Allen Greer. He says he explains the, everything to him, like, "Hey, you know, got to kick you out the society because, uh, well, you know, you, you, didn't, you didn't kiss these white people's ass enough." Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's just like that. It, it kind of is in a uh, way. Uh, yeah, he's like, you know, we made some changes because of what you've done. Bold move right there, but hey, you know, you still got to get the hell out of here. And 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 he's like, "Well, good, I can be with this with with, with Lizzie." And he's like, and David Allen Greer is like, "Yeah." Where where did you leave that girl? He's like, whoops. He he was back in L.A. and left her over in the in New York <laughs> in New York. So the whole time she's been like leaving <laughs> messages like, what the f are you? <laughs> how did I get here? I don't know. I, how am I gonna get back? And she's leaving messages the whole time. By the way, he he's getting messages. He doesn't think to call her back. He just runs to try to find out where she was before. He just runs to get her. He's like, okay. he's like, did you ever think about just calling her back and explaining things? But she's like, well. Uh, I'm at the Empire State Building. Uh, uh, Aaron, uh, I'm I'm walking through New York, and now I think the next I thought the next thing was going because she's like, Aaron, I'm uh, I'm at the airport now. Aaron, I'm on a plane. I thought the next thing would be like, Aaron, f you. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it should have been. Yeah. What the hell is wrong with you? Why'd you leave me here? What the fuck, man? But no, she gets there, gets out. She's like, Well, I'm back in L.A. I'm in an Uber. Meet me here. And then yeah, and then she he meets her there, and it's like she never mentions like this shit again. Like, how did you do that? Oh, uh, what, what was that? Uh, why did you f 
lead me on the top of the Empire State Building. Now they just get on together. the top. Yeah, and he, yeah. he's the one that has to explain to her. Like, well, you might wonder why I've done that. I was part of a magic Negro society. <laughs> hey, you know what? It, 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 I don't want to know. Yeah. Just, yeah. just keep, keep your story. <laughs> and lose my number. Yeah. <laughs> and one thing you missed is like they they get rid of the stakes. They set up. It's like, oh, they're going to wipe your memory if you break the rules. Right, right. You say and, that. And, and David Allen Greer, he has this thing and he tries to do his men in black flashing trick. Tries to flick him in the forehead and just goes, womp. Oh, I guess it doesn't work. Anyway, so let's see how this ends. You better go call that girl. Yeah, and I think he shit. did that to leave him his memory. But again, you know, I, I would have explained that. No, shit. it, it would have been like, like it's just between you and me, kid. Don't tell anybody. Like, get out of here. Go get her. You know, nothing like that. He's just like, yeah, well, shit. Back to kissing ass. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> and then when he's telling her, like, yeah, the, the, the stinger. When he's telling her, like, hey, I'm part of this magical society. She's like, yeah, right, whatever. You know, I'm part of a magical society, too. And he's like, oh, very funny. Uh, credits roll, Stinger comes back up. You see her walking into a salon. And she's like, uh -uh, I'm here. And the janitor pulls like some shampoo or some um, a, a mysterious door opens. She goes through and it shuts and it says, the magical society, or, uh, the American Society of Magical Girlfriends and Wives. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, that made no sense because they were not girlfriend and boyfriend before. <laughs> right. That's like, what? that's a lame ass stinger that makes no sense. Shit made me angry. And maybe it was her assignment to be become his girlfriend to help him better himself. There should be a better setup for that, a better payoff. Uh, you know, somebody saying, well, how did the assignment go? They don't say nothing like that. She just goes through and disappears. It's like, ha, ain't we clever? No. No, hell no. Well, they want to spoof Peter to you. You got to work it out yourself. I ain't working out <laughs> shit. I ain't working out nothing. I'm out. I'm out this bitch. You can, I ain't spending no more time on this. Yeah, somebody remember that. Swag. Yes. So swag. So swag. Society of... Of what? It so was a society of uh, wives and girlfriends. Of uh, what was the S for? Society of of of, uh, of special wives and girlfriends, something like that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's not just society of wives and girlfriends. Swag. Oh, oh yes. Uh, so well, no, so swag. So it is so swag. Yeah, because she had a ring early in the movie that had said so swag. You're like, hey, that's funny. She's like, huh, that was a gift. Mm -hmm. That was a gag gift from somebody. S society of secret wives. Society of secret wives and, and girlfriends. girlfriends. Yeah. There you go. That's okay. what it was. Hated that. Yeah, so swag. No, not. Borderline society of white women. Get out yeah. of here. No. That's what that didn't that wasn't what what else was it? <laughs> no, okay, no, no. <laughs> could you imagine it's like we have a whole operation of all these yeah. societies. You imagine the society God, of damn. white men and just clansmen. That's where the Karens come from. Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> society of Karens. <laughs> Everybody want to build a universe. <laughs> no, no, stop. We have a report of a black man minding his own business. We need you to get over there and yeah. <laughs> make him show his credentials. Yeah. Now, that would have been funny if a whole mission was to take his ass out later. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> to infiltrate the side. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, you know what you have to do. But I like him. So what? Don't put your feelings first. You How did take he go? Yeah. Well, he got kicked out. Yeah. Damn it. You better take them Negroes out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. He would have been their greatest agent, but she was able to shut him down. <laughs> yeah. And here's it, man. One more thing. And I forgot to say this. They've done this. The, the magical Negro has been spoofed enough to where, I mean, even Hollywood is kind of like, yeah, we can't do that shit no more. Really? There's been so many different satirizations and spoofs over the years of the magical Negro. Uh, there was, I forgot to pull up one thing on YouTube. Somebody did a much, it was a bunch of YouTubers. They did a much better joke with that. Somebody might know, You y'all sent it to me. But uh, Key and Peele yeah. even did it. Who the hell are you guys? The, the important Bob question is, is, who are you, Steve? <laughs> oh, this is so good. Even the, the animated <laughs> bird is a nice touch. Yeah. That bird was looking like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You need to find your own troubled white boy. <laughs> Copycats. <laughs> I first saw a parody of this on The Man Show. And yeah. you know how long ago that was. Yeah. 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 Really? Yeah. Damn. So there you go. You got a lot more choices That's out the there. thing. When they, when they announced this movie, seeing the title, I was like, oh, well, finally somebody's doing this. But I was like, 
it's kind of late. <laughs> Nobody's even talked about this. I, I can't even remember the last Magical Negro movie. Yeah, no, it's, it's very late. See, that's the thing. They could have like done something about even that. How you know what, what did I say at the beginning of the show? Like Magical Negroes are getting out of work. Yeah. You know, maybe they could have played on that because nobody's talking about it anymore. Where are these magical Negroes going to go now? You mm-hmm. know, nah, man, no, nah, it's, it's, ah, man, I'm. That was the thing well. is that that society was a job because he wasn't an artist anymore. He's like, well, you need work, don't you? Come join the society. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Church was one that they yeah. did not yeah. too long ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, I'm thinking Mr. Church was the last one. It's the last one I remember. Yeah. Doesn't mean it was the last one made. Yeah, yeah. Well, you made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like what we do. So if you do, check out these other videos just like this one. Check out our other YouTube channels and subscribe to join our wonderful Toasty community. And as always, stay toasty.